going on, man? Not much, not much. I just, uh, I went to a, a party, in quotes, last night for Halloween. Why in quotes? Because <laughs> it was supposed to be like eight, it was a Facebook event, uh, group. And uh, there were supposed to be like eight people coming. And then like one of my friend's boss was supposed to come and then she kind of freaked out. I was like, oh, no, coronavirus. You shouldn't be having a party. So she said it got canceled. I and mean, it was only like me, my fiance, and like and one other person. <laughs> so that's why it's in quotes. <laughs> you just show you and your fiance just showed up at some rando's house. No, no, no. They told me that I can come still. And I was like, good, because I'm going to come anyway, so whether you want me to or not. I uh, I was invited to a Halloween party, but I refused. So what did you do instead? I watched three movies with oh God. my wife. What um, movies were that? I watched Kara's Hell about... <laughs> an... I've seen that on Prime. <laughs> I haven't watched it, though. Uh, no, don't watch it. It's not worth the time. <laughs> it wasn't even enjoyable. Uh, yeah, that's why I haven't watched it. <laughs> uh, then I watched Lamageddon. Oh. Which, uh, is on Prime. Very good. Made it about halfway through that one. and uh, Only halfway, even though, <laughs> yeah, even though it was good? By good, I mean, we made it halfway because my wife wanted to stop watching it. Uh, okay. And then we watched, uh, Moose. Which was about... Uh, resurrected like moose god in Alaska who are gonna uh, went around killing things. Yeah, that's fucked. Um, Prime X has so many like bad, uh, like good shitty movies oh, like no. that. Like, it's amazing. I, I Prime is probably the streaming service I use the most. I didn't, um, I didn't know about Prime's potential. No, Prime is so good. I love Prime. Um, I watched one recently. It was called Killer Pinata. Oh, I saw that, that one. Up. No, watch that one. That one's pretty good. Why? Uh, it's you know, it's a killer pinata, and it was actually kind of funny. There's like, it was like you think you get old after a while, but it, I don't know. I it was, it, it was very funny. Was it like CG or did they just throw a pinata no, around? It was a pinata with like, with expressions. They gave it like eyebrows. That's what they did with Carousel. They just got a carousel horse and propped it around. Okay, but a pinata is inherently funnier than a carousel horse. That's true. <laughs> and then there's like a, a, a pinata store owner, and it's like this old like Hispanic grandma, and she's like, I have to kill the pinata. Yeah, I'm guessing and she, she's like going around smashing pinatas at like little girls' birthday parties. <laughs> oh, man. I also watched two movies in my party. Yeah, well, we watched uh, Haosu. Have you ever seen Haosu? Um, uh, rings a bell. Uh, it's a Japanese movie from '77. No, it's a uh, kind of. It is a Halloween tradition of mine to watch that every year. It is one of my favorite movies. It's a. Uh, uh, it's like a haunted house. It's like this group of girls. They go to a haunted house, and the fucked up shit happens. And they don't have names. They're all like. Like, the main character's name is Gorgeous. There's another character named Kung Fu. There's Mac. She's the fat one. There's Fantasy and Professor. What the Oh, hell? and Sweet. And Sweet. Yeah, no. I. It's too good of a movie to, for this podcast, but it might... Yeah, it, you should definitely do it for an episode. I love that movie. Have you ever seen uh, House Sharks? <laughs> A house haunted by shark ghosts? No, it's not a ghost. It's like a uh, shark has taken residence in this home and can like swim freely through the walls. What the fuck? Yeah. Just just checking if you've seen it or not, because you should. The first scene, or one of the first scenes, is uh, some woman sits on the toilet and gets her ass eaten by a shark and fucking dies. Oh, that reminds me of uh, our movie, Poultry Geist. Yes, this week, on <laughs> episode 9, we're discussing Poultry Geist. Oh my god, this movie. Yeah, I, I, already haven't, told you. I haven't seen this in a while. 
Yeah, I think I saw it last year during Halloween. Uh, yeah. How did you find out about this movie? I have no fucking clue. Well, um, I found out, I, I might have told you about it, to be honest. Um, I know about this movie because it's a, a trauma movie. Oh, yep. Yeah. I, yeah, it's, uh, it's directed by Lloyd Kaufman. I believe other trauma movies include The Toxic Avenger. Yes, Toxic Avenger. Oh yeah, this was directed by Lloyd Kaufman. Toxic Avenger. Uh, Surf Nazis Must Die, um, Kabuki Cop. Um, I have I've actually met Lloyd Kaufman, really? the director. Yes, he was. Um, it was at New York Comic Con, and uh, I was he was being interviewed, and I was just walking by, and I was like, "Holy shit, that's Lloyd Kaufman!" <laughs> like loudly. <laughs> And then I like waited for the interview to be done, and then I talked to him a little bit, and then um, he started flirting with my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and then I got him to sign my copy of Surf Nazis Must Die, what, you just which I bought. You just this, no, I bought it at the pocket. con, and like, please sign this. Surf Nazis Must Die isn't that good of a movie, but I did Poultry Geist and Talk to the Avenger are definitely better. I love Toxic Avenger, but yeah, Poultry Guys came out in two thousand six on a five hundred thousand dollar budget, and this was achieved by having the cast mostly made up of volunteers that traveled from around the world to work for free in the movie. Yeah, you can tell there's like in that there's like a scene of like protesters, and it's like they don't look like normal extras. No, and they, no, they look like weirdos, which makes sense. Many many props and masks in the film were donated from special effects studios around the world. This movie came out in limited the theatrical releases and made a whopping twenty two thousand dollars in theaters. Mm. Uh, twenty two thousand dollars. So it didn't even make its budget back. No. This was shot on thirty five millimeter film. That's surprising. Yeah, it was shot in an abandoned McDonald's in Buffalo, New York. <laughs> but the the contract with McDonald's banned nudity scenes, so they just shot the nude scenes in an abandoned church across the street that they decorated to look like the McDonald's. That's really funny. <laughs> Why does McDonald's give a shit? I don't. There's know. nudity. There there was a documentary on this movie actually. Yeah, I wanted to watch the documentary. I didn't have time. It's a full feature length film. It's an hour and twenty minutes. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I just because I watched, I because I've been busy because Halloween, and if I'm watching a movie, I want it to be a Halloween movie. True. Uh, the so, documentary yeah. is named "Poultry in Motion: Truth is Stronger Than Chicken." Yeah, I think there was a, <laughs> there was an alternate ending to this movie. Oh well. Okay. Well, I guess we could talk about that. Uh... We'll talk at the end. At the end. All right. Why don't you start us off? I hold on. Let me pull it up my notes. Okay, um, it starts in a, with two <laughs> teenagers humping in a graveyard, and uh, right off the bat, you could tell the tone of the tone of this movie is uh, the girl says, "Oh, oh, Arnie." I'm, I on my notes. I call him Chris Raygun, who's a YouTuber because he looks like Chris <laughs> Raygun. Arby. Yeah, Arby. Oh. <laughs> He's like, oh, Arby, you're the best dry humper in school. <laughs> and it's like, that's what they say on the basketball team. <laughs> oh, and the, the graveyard, or the grave they're humping on, is the chief of from the uh, village people. Oh, that's, what the graves, <laughs> that's what the gravestone says. Because <laughs> they're humping on a Indian burial ground, but it's just a graveyard. Well, the problem that I had was once again I did not acquire this movie legally. Oh. So all, I have it on Blu-ray. <laughs> all the all the subtitles were in French. So when that came up and it tried to read the headstone, it just said it all in French. Oh. Could you not just read it? I didn't want to take the time to rewind. Fair enough. And then, uh, 
were talking about how they just graduated high school and this is going to be like the last time they see each other before she goes off to college. And she's like, how about you come to college with me? And he's like, I think he says verbatim, I can't go. My mom's a retard and my dad's blocked. <laughs> and my favorite thing about this movie is like just the, the delivery of the, uh, the Arby and his girlfriend. <laughs> it's just like, it's just like this funny, like, like, I don't know if deadpan is the word I'm looking for. It's but yeah, it's a wonderful dynamic just the, that they have. Yeah, they're just like the delivery they all keep saying. It's very funny. Like whenever he says his mom's a retard, I just laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then yeah, and while they're having sex, uh, zombie arms come out and start groping them, and then one of them fingers uh, Barbie's ass, and he thinks it's his girlfriend. And then the finger breaks off in this asshole, which it shows like a fake ass, <laughs> which I think is a prop they reuse several times because there's multiple scenes with fake asses in this movie. Well, they might be fake. Keep it no, they, you know it looks very fake. It looks like the same exact ass each time. Well, how much diversity can there be in man butt? It's true. It's true. This is on a low budget. And then uh, while they're having sex, he comes because he gets fingered in his prostate. Um, a creeper comes out with an axe. And they're like, oh my god, he's holding an axe. And she's like, oh my god, look at his other hand. He's jerking off. With also, it looks like a fake, it looks like a dildo. Mm -hmm. It's meant to be his real penis. Um, and then he, uh, <laughs> then they go, ew, this is gross. And they leave. They leave their underwear there. And the creeper smells. The, the guy's underwear, and then zombie arms kill him. Yeah, they fist him to death. <laughs> yep. Um, so then, next scene, it's him driving by protest. It says seven months later, I think. Mm -hmm. um, there's a huge protest outside this restaurant. He goes over to see the protest. He's like, what happened to the Indian burial ground that was here? And, um, like it's a new the KFC ripoff American I don't chicken remember. bunker American chicken bunker and uh they did it <laughs> they did it on the Indian burial ground and then he sees his girlfriend there and she's a, a lesbian now and that the, so the organization that's protesting is called CLAM it's called College Lesbians Against uh oh, I forget what the M stands for so do I. I remember <laughs> college lesbians. College lesbians against massacres? I don't fucking know. And then, uh, he's like, okay. And it's funny because then, uh, Arby says, are there any Indians here actually protesting? And the lesbian's like, yeah, we have an Indian. Get the chief. Get the chief. And this, like, visibly intoxicated, like, Indian guy comes out and just vomits. And they're like playing like like music and they're like, oh, how noble they are. Somebody find Chief, what's his face? Are you upset about the restaurant? He's so noble. This movie is very, very mean-spirited. They make fun of basically ev every demographic, except you think considering fried chicken is a very important motif, they don't really make fun of black people. Ar Arby sings a song, and the song is essentially how he's gonna work at the American Chicken Bunker. Essentially just to trigger the libs. I don't wanna It's talk. literally the main character's motivation is to trigger the libs. Trigger the lebs. <laughs> the les. The lens. I don't want to talk about any of the fucking musicals in this movie. I Why? You don't like the songs? I am sick of songs in the movies that we watch. <laughs> yeah, since, this movie's also musical. Yeah, ever since fucking Indie Ron, I can't <laughs> stand to watch a single note and singing played in this, any movie that we watch. Well, I, I don't know. I think the songs in this movie are pretty funny. Alright. Oh, I forgot a funny story about this movie. So... One time I went with uh, to a Halloween party. This is like three years ago. 
And I just watched this movie like a couple days before and I thought it was hilarious. And I wanted to show people. So I brought this movie. And it was like the morning after like the party because we stayed over. And I put this movie on and just was incredibly awkward. No one thought it was funny. They just thought this was stupid. And I felt so fucking embarrassed. Yeah. It's a, you don't show this to people. I'll watch it because we have similar tastes. But you don't fucking show this to normies. I know I should have taken that to account. I don't know why I didn't think about that. I think we turned it off right when he got fingered in the butt. <laughs> so what, you made it 30 seconds in? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I, I like, feel secondhand embarrassment. I've never felt that before. Holy shit. <laughs> don't worry. I don't like those friends anyways. Um... So yeah, so he goes into the restaurant, he talks to the manager. The manager is a fucking Vietnam, like, lieutenant, for some reason. Yeah, Vietnam I don't know why. You. Yeah, that's true. Also, this is, like, filmed in, like, yeah, 2006, and that guy looks like he's, like, in his 30s. He's way too fucking young to be from Vietnam. Um, but he gets the co-worker... Chicken restaurant to own the lives. Yeah. And then, yeah, the co-worker is a Muslim, and she's wearing a full burqa. And her name is Hamas. And my fa she's like my favorite character We're not in this talk movie. Too much about Hamas. No, Hamas is hilarious. Hamas saves the day. Hamas is a great character. Uh, she does like this weird, like, noise. She goes, hmm? Cause, like, <laughs> she sounds like, sounds like the, the fucking Skeksy from uh, Dark Crystal. Um, yeah, so then there's also, like, a gay Hispanic character named Paco. And then, yeah, and there's not much done with him. And then, uh, a guy runs into the restaurant and warns them that they're all going to die. That guy? Uh, Ron Jeremy. Yeah, Ron Jeremy. Very odd cameo for Ron Jeremy. Very random. Then, uh, we have another cameo, too, right after. Uh, Subway Jared. That was Subway Jared? That was Subway Jared. Holy shit. Well, no, it's not actually Subway Jared. Okay. <laughs> it looked nothing like him. I don't know what he looks like. Don't lie to my face. <laughs> yeah, so this guy who looks nothing like Subway Jared comes in with a name tag that says Jared. As you know, because everyone, when you're famous, you wear name tags of your name so people know who you are. So, something we forgot to mention is that inside the restaurant there are these really gross pulsating chicken eggs in the fridge yeah. and one is fed to not Subway Jared who immediately starts having explosive shits in the bathroom immediately like as soon as he eats the egg he runs to the bathroom and then yeah or there's a <laughs> speech about America or something yeah, he's like, this is, yeah, because they're trying to shut down the chicken restaurant. He's like, this is the most American thing ever. Um, and he has a threesome with the lesbians. No, no, and then, like, my meat, you vegan whore. And then, uh, yeah, the, when their girlfriends are trying to shut down the restaurant, they show them pictures, like, look what they're doing to the chickens. And then they show pictures of Abu Ghraib, Ghraib, which is where the <laughs> Americans tortured Iraqi prisoners. They're just photoshopped to have chickens in them instead. And then, yeah, he fantasizes he has a threesome with the two lesbians. Yeah, and he says, eat my meat, you vegan horse. The man having explosive shits. I, I was a little confused. I thought he gave birth to, like, a creature which immediately crawled back up into his body. No. Okay. Stupider than that. He, quote-unquote, dies and sheds his old skin, turning from a 350-pound American... To about 200 pounds. I think that guy was probably more than that, to be honest. Well, that crawls, guy was huge. Like, a little mini him crawls out of his own ribcage like a beautiful butterfly. And that's, yeah, that's as far beautiful. as that plot point goes. Yeah, then he says, I'm skinny, I'm skinny, and he runs out of the building. Oh, also... The Covered bathroom, in blood. The bathroom he was in. Fucking destroyed. It was like... Covered in shit. Colic painting on the ceilings, on the walls... 
and of course Arby has to clean it up while he sings another song. Honestly, if I worked if at somewhere like that, and they said clean that up, I'd be like, I fucking quit. <laughs> Especially if it was my first day too. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. And then the general, the chicken general. Oh no, another song comes. Yeah, and then the Colonel Sanders. I forget what his name is too. Just call him the general. Or Colonel the Sanders, general. fuck it. Yeah, and the protesters sing another song at him, and he's like, no, our food's healthy and delicious. And then, uh, <laughs> that song's over. Uh, then, uh, Paco puts a bunch of chicken heads in, like, a meat grinder while Hummus prays in the background while going, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then, uh... While he's putting yeah, and while he's doing that, yeah... I'll do it. Once okay. he's putting the chicken meat in the grinder, like, he really doesn't like his job because he just starts masturbating into the chicken meat. Secret sauce, man. That's true. He starts And he call he's like, time for the revolution! <laughs> he masturbates into the chicken, but in the background, you hear a strange clucking sound. And Predator Vision sneaks up behind him. The grinder magically turns on. And Paco gets pushed into the meat grinder. <laughs> yeah, and then the yeah, and then uh what's it called? Uh Arby. He's like in the back, finished cleaning, and there's this old man who's like the same out like uniform as him that looks a lot like him, which is actually the director. It's Lloyd Kaufman, and they uh, he's like, "You're like an old version of me," and they have a song about how the old guy is saying about how he wasted his life here, and you're he's gonna end up like him. And then uh, Arby's like, "No, no, no, I'm gonna become rich and famous by working here." <laughs> An Irish song. And they're both wearing, like, a dress. It's for... That's the uniform. Yeah. For the... They call it a... Not meter made. Something made. And then, uh... It cuts back to hummus. And then she says, The chicken has declared jihad upon us all. All covered in blood from Paco. And, and then she's like, Oh, yeah, that reminds me. I need to go buy tampons. <laughs> And then someone orders a sloppy Jose, which is uh, your icon is. Yes, it is. It's a sloppy Joe with two olives on top of it. That sounds fucking awful. The worst sandwich ever made. But they, and then because they use the Paco's of Paco meat. In the yeah, so the sandwich Jose, comes alive and it starts to talk. The general comes in, or sorry, Colonel comes in. And, uh, he eats the sandwich, the Paco sandwich. Before, but yeah, the taco, the talking Paco sandwich is to say the weakness of the chicken, the chicken spirit that's possessing the place. And before he could say the weakness, the general eats him. He's like, "Oh, this food is so good. I'm gonna eat it." And then we cut to another employee in the fridge. Who's the the one, the white trash one? Yeah, very white trash. He starts having sex with one of the chicken corpses in the fridge, but it comes to life and eats his dick off. I would say it eats his dick off. I say it, it fuses with his dick, because his dick becomes a giant cock cock. <laughs> <laughs> well, they kill uh, the cock cock, but it's... Hummus pretty, kills him. Hummus kills him by shoving a mop up the redneck's ass and out of his front, completely exploding his dick, and blood goes everywhere, including the cursed chicken blood, which gets into some pre-made buckets of chicken. And then Colonel Sanders gives all the protesters outside the chicken, and he eats it. Then, uh, it comes to a scene, apparently Colonel Sanders is into, a uh, age play and diaper play, and the, uh, lesbian is fulfilling his fantasies by being his mommy 
Yep. And then uh, the, the new college lesbian girlfriend turns out she was in cahoots with the colonel and hosted a fake protest for media coverage of the restaurant. So devious, those lesbians. <laughs> but everyone starts getting sick from the chicken. So they ask the general to uh, take a bite to show just how good his chicken is. He immediately starts having the shits and runs to the bathroom running through a crowd of puking protesters that ate the tainted chicken buckets and he lays an egg in the toilet which hatches into some chicken beast which attacks the general but the general bites its head off He's like, you're not gonna eat me. Who can play at this game? <laughs> and then we go to the kitchen where Arby and Wendy start to make up. But out of the fridge comes a zombie. It's the zombie of the guy whose dick gets exploded. Uh, Carl's Jr. Car a lot of the characters are named after uh, fast food restaurants. There's Arby's, Carl's Jr., um, Denny, yeah. Wendy. Oh, I didn't even think about fucking Wendy. Yeah. That's, uh, I, I guess Mickey is meant to be like McDonald's. True. Well, Carl's Jr. C comes out of the closet. Uh, not the closet. He comes out of the... <laughs> Carl's Jr. comes out Good of the him. walk-in fridge. And he begins turning into a chicken. Yeah. Uh. And yeah, and then I forget what they do to him. Do they? No, they put uh, alcohol on him later. It later, yeah. Who the fuck's calling me? Oh. Is it a pro uh, political one? Oh. Pennsylvania Democrats. Damn. I just don't answer the phone if I don't recognize the number. I always answer the phone. Why? Because I have to. For work. Oh. So all these unidentified numbers that come through, I have okay. to pick them up. Anyway. I, what I said is not necessarily true. If it's from an unrecognized number outside of Pennsylvania, mm. I want to answer it. Stole me from Texas. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's like, you're, you're calling you, but your uh, car's warranty or something. Yeah, I get like, that. Like, shut the fuck up. But the general, as well, starts to transform from eating the tainted chicken. And he turns mm -hmm. into a giant chicken egg that hatches, and a chicken monster emerges, biting off Denny, the manager's head, and chases the crew around. And Yeah, and the zombie chickens start killing everyone. This... And it's like it's just a long montage of them killing everything. Yeah, the scene where all the patrons were turned into chicken zombies, I think it can only really be described as absolute chaos. Yeah. I, uh, my favorite part of it is uh, one of the chicken zombies takes someone's face and puts it to a deli slicer. I was like, ooh, fuck, oh god, that sounds terrible. My favorite Did you part... imagine of, that? I would not like to imagine that at all. <laughs> my favorite part were when two of the chicken zombies grab a guy by his legs, and one of oh, them yeah. says... Make a wish. He says, I wish I was a princess. And then they rip him in half. Make a wish. I wish I was a princess. Oh, not my face. Not my face. Get in my face. The yeah. chicken mascot saves the day with an M16, 
that he just keeps with the children's toys in the back. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, Lloyd saves them all. Yeah, Lloyd saves them all. But the uh, manager chicken, who was that, Denny? Denny, eats, yeah. eats his nose off, but he's still alive. They look, all look outside the window, and there are just hundreds of chicken zombies. And then they encounter Carl Jr. zombie again, who... Oh, wait, no, 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 you forgot okay. something really funny. Okay. They're like, oh my god, how are we going to stop them? It's just a thin wall of glass. And, like, and then Wendy just changes uh, the sign from open to closed, and they all just leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, like, one of my favorite jokes in the movie. <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah. They capture the Carl Jr. zombie, and interrogate him asking him how to stop the uh the chicken zombies he says whiskey now's not the time for a drink alcohol fine you want some alcohol here and they give the chicken zombie alcohol which kills it he says uh because they're indians (laughs) yes or native americans cut back to what the paco burger said before about how the one weakness of the chicken is the weakness of all Native Americans. <laughs> oh, God. This movie. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. We left out all of the horrific things that they call hummus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Denny calls her Hamas. <laughs> But then, speaking of uh, hummus, she comes back, and she actually saves all of them. And then they're like, didn't you die? And she's like, no time for that. You you skipped the part. Oh, damn. So, yeah, it turns out that alcohol kills the zombies, and the lesbian girlfriend turns into a chicken. But she also has a giant chicken cock and tries to rape Wendy, but is saved by hummus who drinks a gallon of meat steroids <laughs> yeah and gets absolutely and just explodes yeah she gets absolutely <laughs> ripped and then <laughs> she explodes yeah. and someone calls her Barry Bonds <laughs> uh, they all find a keg of beer in the back and Arby yeah, was just went... at this chicken restaurant for some reason well I saw the protesters bring it in before Oh, okay. They start to spray the chickens as they flood into the building, but they run out of beer. So Hamas, uh, Arby, and Wendy all go into the walk-in fridge, which is basically one of the nests from Alien. (laughs) Yeah. And they all, all the eggs begin to hatch. So they find a little girl in there that they decide to take with them. But Hamas decides that she needs to save the day. And she takes off her burka, and she is fucking smoking. Yeah, she's, she's like blondes too, which, <laughs> which I was surprised the first time I saw it. <laughs> really hot blonde, and she also has C4 strapped to her. <laughs> and she's like, may Allah bless America, and, and she'll she, save them all. And then she blows up the restaurant while they all escape. And as they all drive off into the distance, the girl that they saved from the walk-in freezer shits an egg out. Which scares and they... Arby and Wendy so badly that they start to scream, and then they flip the car, which explodes, and they all die. An obvious stock footage, too. No, it wasn't stock footage. It, that was stock footage, or at least it was clearly not them driving. You could see the stunt driver where, uh, in the well, car. Anyway, they all <laughs> explode in the credits roll. But that scene was... Who's the director's name? Lloyd Kaufman. Okay, it was... He filmed that scene in one of his earlier movies and it got cut out. Yes, it is stock footage. That's what stock footage is. Okay. And he just uses it in all his other movies now. I thought stock footage was like, you make uh, companies film all this No, that's true too. But like if you reuse footage from another movie, that's called stock footage too. Okay, well we all learned something. Especially if you use it for multiple movies. Yeah. I love trauma movies. I need to watch more. Uh, apparently, I didn't know that there were four Toxic Avengers, at least. Yeah, there's also a cartoon series for kids. <gasps> what? I, I, or at least, there, I don't know if it got picked up, but I know there's at least one episode. Oh, Jesus. Oh, uh, I, I hosted a movie night on Yeah, 13 episodes. 
Jesus. Oh, what movie? I watched two movie nights. Movies on Friday with my friends. I watched uh, The Boy, which was an actual... Oh, oh God. Movie. That movie's... I've never seen it. It does not sound good, though. It, it is good. Really? I know the twist. Oh, well, then it's not good. So yeah. You already know the fucking twist. Although it's interesting to watch a second time. And okay. then we watched Zombievers. <laughs> How was that? That's just what I expected. Zombie Beavers and Nudity. Oh, okay, yeah. How many uh hairy vaginas are there? How many hairy vaginas? Yeah. Uh a few. Okay, good. I don't want my zombie beaver movie. Um, do you see anything on the internet? I mean, besides the picture I just sent you. Oh, yeah. Which, well, let's not even uh, talk about that one too much. It's no, called, let's call not. back to the fan art. <laughs> uh, I, oh, one of my favorite album series dropped a new album. Okay. It's, uh, it's, uh, called Mouth Dreams. Mouth and it's, uh, there's been... There's been three albums. It's called uh, Mouth Sounds, Mouth Silence, and fuck, uh, oh, fuck, what's the third one? Well, they're all like songs. They're like remix samples. I played one of them for you. It's like a, one of my favorite songs is uh, Back in Black mixed with um, I Would Walk a Thousand Miles. Hmm. I think I played that at our bachelor party. Well, I don't really remember too much about my bachelor party. <laughs> I was gone. I did find something on the internet that I've been waiting to watch with you. What? Gail Cord Schuler made a creepy pasta for Halloween. She made a creepy pasta for Halloween. You want to watch the Gail Cord Schuler creepy pasta with me? Yes. Uh, let me share my screen. I wonder how many uh, cat rapes are going to be in this one. <laughs> Poor spot. Or, oh, wow. Look at it to the void. Yoink. Ignore the Super Mario 64 playthrough. <laughs> oh, wait. Did I download it? I'm looking at your favorites and judging. Do it. Here, I'll yeah, there's nothing you, interesting. I'll there. Oh, fuck you. It's how... <laughs> it's how, uh... Oh, me and my uh, fiance bonded is one time she was when I would like this first uh, talking to her she was on the computer and I just like looked at her favorites and was like what's Faku? We know well what Faku was. <laughs> what did she say? She was like oh yeah it's just hentai. Well at least she's honest. No of course. <laughs> That's why I love her. Are you ready for this creepy pasta? I, I like the, the mood she's setting. Alright. Prepare to be spooked. I didn't sleep for six weeks after she released this. Oh my god, is this six minutes long? We're only gonna watch the first, like, two-thirds of it. Okay. The rest is just insane ramblings. Happy Halloween, everyone. Ah! My men tell me millennials enjoy creepy pasta narration. So in the spirit of Halloween... This is my attempt at reading a creepy pasta. Here it goes. You may have heard the legend of Sarah Avery, a woman so fat she has her own gravitational field and whose toxic farts could turn an entire city into retard zombies. She's so fat. Not even black men will date her, only gamers. Urban legend says that if you go into a dark bathroom at night, and chant, Sarah Avery, Sarah Avery, Sarah Avery. Three times. This is Data's wife, right? Bathroom mirror, you will gain no, 600 pounds and die. Oh, uh, okay. But that is Who's Sarah the Avery? Serious part of this legend. I I Did you up. know that Sarah Avery is at large? Both literally and in the figurative sense. Many years ago, Sarah Avery escaped her prison compound and has been roaming the country in constant search of food to support her exponential growth. This is not a creepypasta, this is just your mama jokes. Halloween night, 
They say to never eat your candy before you return home from trick-or-treating. If Sarah Avery smells candy, she will pick you up and eat you. Just like she ate Bubba the Black Jesuit's ginger boyfriend. This oh, happened God. to a little Mexican child in El Paso, Texas. The Nino was out on Halloween night <laughs> dressed as a burrito. Although the yeah. Nino wasn't yet fat as enough to dress up for toxic Halloween. farts, he was too fat to make it through a night of trick-or-treating without getting out of breath and needing to stop for a snack. Breathing heavily, the little Nino reached into his candy bucket like the plump, squishy little burrito boy he was. His sweaty, salt chica fingers scooped blindly through the candy bucket before grasping at a tasty sugary box of hot tamales. Hot, tired, and drooling, the Nino tore open the box and began shoving mouthfuls of candy into his chubby mouth. There was a low, booming roar in the distance. But the sound wasn't thunder. Unbeknownst to the little Nino, these were the pounding, flat-footed, squishy footsteps of Sarah Avery. Her giant, fat what? girl nose had detected the scent of candy and was <laughs> slowly descending upon its source. Like most Mexican children, the little burrito boy was out unattended in the middle of the street. He was easy prey for Sarah Avery to spot. Oblivious to the hungry fat girl in his midst, he continued to chow down his box of hot tamales. Sarah's stomach growled. It was a gurgling, wet, horrible sound. And this sound was what finally caught his attention, but it was too late. The boy saw a morbidly obese shadow cast over him. Assuming it was his mother, he turned to look behind him and saw the jaws of death. Hot tamale, Sarah bellowed with hunger. These were the last words the boy heard before being scooped up and swallowed by the monster. The little burrito boy was never seen again. Luckily, oh. he was only a Mexican child. His parents never noticed and had a dozen more children exactly like him. However, <laughs> you may not be so lucky. Never open your candy while out trick-or-treating and always lock your doors when you get home with your candy or Sarah Avery might just come after you next. The end. I hope you enjoyed this special Halloween creepypasta. <laughs> That was very scary. I know. I, I Google Sarah Avery, and apparently it's a really hot-looking therapist. It's a redhead. Uh, maybe. Uh, I, there's also an actress named Sarah Avery, that's, which is that's probably the one. But she's like been in nothing. She's been in one episode of ER, and then two of the Unit. Because she's in two jail of... for eating Mexican children. I just love her. <laughs> It was basically the first half was just your mama jokes, and the second one was just fat jokes <laughs> with racism thrown in for no reason. Well, I'm glad you liked it. Of course, I love hearing crazy people ramble on. That's why I like you, Brandon. Oh, thanks. Wait. <laughs> oh, yeah, and the second movie, I watched two movies. I said I watched the first one was How Sue, and the second one was Freddy vs. Jason. With, oh, that's, you know what? A lot of people didn't like it. Well, I love that movie. Well, I love it, too. But the reason people didn't like it is a lot of people said, oh, Freddy got too much time on screen. And other people said, oh, Jason got too much time on screen, which is a sign that it was pretty well balanced. <laughs> I think Freddy has way more time on screen than Jason does, which makes sense because Freddy actually has a character and Jason doesn't really at all. He's just I killed thing. Yeah, I really want a Freddy vs. Jason 2, but the franchises were both really suffering at the time, and now there's a giant uh, legal battle over rights. Really? Also, Robert England's probably old as shit by now. Did you see um, the 
Friday the 13th fan films that came out? No. Uh, they're on YouTube. One is called Never Hike Alone. And then the second one came out a few weeks ago, or last October, I believe. They're pretty good. Uh, I watched, because I've only seen the first one, and I saw it a long time ago. What? Of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. But then recently I watched uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. But that one was really good. I liked that a lot. Yeah, none of them are bad. No, I, from what I've heard, it's uh, fans generally say one and three are the best. I mean, if you, like, okay. if you like 80s slasher horror, then Nightmare on Elm Street 1 and 3 are good. But if you like just... Gay things, the second one's good. Well, I was going to say, if you like slasher horror in general, watch them all. Mm. I mean, I've never seen the second one. I've just heard that one's like very homoerotic. Does that make you uncomfortable? No, I've never seen it. And that's not why I haven't seen it. I've just never had an interest in Nightmare on Elm Street that much. I'm curious. I want to see why people say it's gay. I find that surprising that uh, you don't like Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, not a slasher guy. Yeah, not really. Not because I'm like, oh, God, I'm so not into gore or anything. I just don't. I don't find, know why. Don't find it interesting. Yeah. I mean, I like that it's spawned a lot of cliches, and it's also interesting since it's pretty much a dead genre at this point. So you're not going to get any new ones. Yeah, and horror is not... I mean, I guess horror is actually getting better in recent years, but the two thousand, uh, like the late 2000s and like the mid-2010s, gore horror was god-all garbage. What, like violent gore? No, just garbage. Oh. Yeah, since horror was just not good in general. Gotcha. I mean, yeah. the new Nightmare on Elm Street and the new Friday the 13th, I enjoyed. The ones from like 2009? Yeah. Yeah, they're okay, but uh, if I, if I saw the remake of the Nightmare on Elm Street, and I was like, this is just like the first one. I don't know. I was like too much of the same. Yeah, uh, it had a lot of callbacks, but it established the character a bit more, which I found. I liked, uh, it's Rorschach's played Freddy, I remember yeah. that. <laughs> oh, there was another video I found. Hold on, I want to see if I can pull that up for you. It's so sad Steve Jobs died of Ligma. Who the hell is Steve Jobs? Ligma Balls. I do you like Watchmen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I went through like a huge Watchmen phase when I was like sixteen. Oh lord, one of those. Yeah. Yeah. I like read the book constantly, and I watched the movie. I was like, I like the book better, but That's I understand why they changed the ending in the movie. Whoa. But, what do you mean? I didn't read the books. Oh, in the books, um, you know how like uh, they fake the Dr. Manhattan attacking everyone? Yeah. In the book, it is a giant squid monster that, when released, releases a giant psychic blast that kills everything instead. Oh, that's stupid. Yeah. That's what, uh, uh Ozzy Mendez, Ozzy, yeah, Ozzy Mendez was working on. He was making a giant squid. Oh, God. It was like, he was like, because he made people think it's an alien, so that's why they're uniting. They're uniting against the world against an alien invasion. Oh. Well, in that case, I think the movie plot's a bit better. Oh, God damn it! Yeah, that's why it's like, I, you know, the book's still better, but I understand why they changed it. Fucking ants. Ants? Yeah, I got ants. I in your pants? Uh, ha, ha, ha. Did I ever tell you that story? No. About how I got ants in my pants? Really? No. One day, when I was just a young man, I was in, uh, I believe it was kindergarten, and we had like the spring fair the day before so in the middle of gym class where the spring fair was held the prior day i saw mm -hmm. a tootsie pop in the corner that was not open so i said oh shit, free tootsie pop and i picked it up and i put it in my pocket for later next period i started feeling tickling all uh -oh. over my chest and down my legs. 
So I lift my shirt up, and I am covered in ants. Turns out they made a fucking hive inside the Tootsie Pop overnight, and I had to go to the nurse and say I had ants in my pants. And, and have <laughs> replacement clothes sent to me from home. <laughs> I like that you're like, yeah, this Tootsie Pop right, or Tootsie Roll I found on the floor. I'm gonna eat it later. Yo, it was still in the wrapper. Cut me some fucking slack. Tootsie Pops. Are one good. time, one time, uh, my dad bought like this box of uh, like cookies home, and like that night I was like, got like smoked a bunch. And I was like, oh yeah, the cookies. And I went downstairs and they opened the box of cookies. And I picked one up and I noticed it was right before I put it in my mouth. I noticed it was covered in ants. I just say, you almost eat a bug infested piece of food, it'll sober you up quite quickly. Yeah, I'd imagine. <laughs> I'm so glad I did not eat that. I'm just picturing you putting it up to your mouth. You see the ants and you're like, should I? <laughs> I'll wash it off. Oh, we should tell a, a, sto a Halloween story for the both of us I mentioned recently. Halloween we went to Eastern State Penitentiary. Oh, man. All right, why don't you do it? All right, so I was a senior in high school, and then he was a, a junior, and we're just uh, hanging out at his house, and we both just started smoking. Or I just started smoking at this point, so we were both got really high off of, like, one hit back in those good old days. And then our mutual friend calls us up, and he's like, hey, I'm going to go to this haunted house. You guys want to come? And they're like, oh my god, yeah, bro. <laughs> and then he comes, and it turns out, not only is his mom driving, his younger brother is there, too. Who is probably... He's like 18 now. So, yeah, so he's probably like 10. Oh, Jesus. You're making me feel old. I know. He's probably like, not 10. Maybe 11 or 12. Yeah, as we're both high as shit in this car ride, which was probably like. It felt like eternity. It did. It was, it was probably like 25 minutes. I thought we were going to take the train in. But, uh, no. Oh. So, yeah, and then his mom's talking to us the whole time, and she's particularly interested in. He's like, why are you being so quiet? I keep saying your fucking name. I'm sorry. It's fine. I'm giving um, you more fucking work to do. I'm sorry. Uh, she's like, why aren't you talking? You seem so glum. And then she starts calling him Eeyore. Which has stuck to this day. And stuck to this day. She still calls him that whenever she sees him. And we get there, and I've never been to, like, a haunted house before, I guess. <laughs> so, so We went to the scariest one in the state. So yeah, and I just, I don't know if it's just me, or if because I was really high, and I just, like, this isn't fucking scary at all, this is cheesy as shit. And I'm just, like, laughing at everything, and laughing at how I have scared everyone else is getting. Eventually, I, I started scaring this group of girls behind us. They're like, why are you doing this? I'm like, because it's funny. They paid to be scared. They paid to be scared, I'm gonna fucking scare you. You know, you can volunteer at those places. I don't want to get punched in the face. That's fair. I thought yeah. it was pretty spooky. I, I wasn't scared at all. My also, yeah. also, probably didn't help that I'd been there, like, when it's a museum. So I, I've, I've been there several times when it's a museum. And, like, I recognized everything. Probably took away some of the mystique, too. My wife refuses to go. To, uh, Eastern State Penitentiary. Tell her I say she's a pussy. Oh, she hears it enough from me. <laughs> yeah, I, that night I was literally laughed so much that like my throat hurt because <laughs> I was just like could not stop laughing. Meanwhile, I was dead silent, high out of my mind. <laughs> yeah, we had two very different experiences. Good time though. I could yeah I could deal with people when I'm high. Very well, I feel. I don't speak. Yeah. My my fiance also 
to can't deal with people well i always have to do it i always get the delivery so next week zolar next week zolar uh, have a happy halloween even though it's already over yeah <laughs> to suck your dick.